Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now recently a group member was having problems with Affinity Photo and doing layer masks, this is Gary Hunt and he had been trying to follow um, Serif's own tutorial on layer masks and about replacing the sky which is what he wants to do in an image um, and he was having problems with that that has sort of been solved because he has been in contact with Serif and they've sort of helped point him in the right direction but it then goes on to say that it was much easier sort of when he used on one photo raw which is a program I've never heard of um, and he said like working with masks in that program was much easier um, so I, I quickly looked up for a YouTube video for on one photo raw with sky replacement and I found this one here um, and I've watched it and yeah, to be perfectly honest I think this looks to be more complicated than using layer masks in Affinity Photo and but yeah, this, if this is a program that uh, Gary is used to you know he knows where things are and how things operate I've never used the program so I really can't comment too much on how difficult it is but I thought well as in most computer programs Affinity Photo is much like any other one in that there is more than one way to do something so yes you could use like the layer masks like in Serif's video or you can do a workaround where you don't use a layer mask at all you really just need the selection tool so I'm going to use this Pagoda image which I've been using recently in another tutorial which I got from pixabay.com which is a free royalty free website so I'm going to come to the flood select tool and I'm going to click on the new mode with a tolerance that's quite low about 8% and I'm going to click somewhere in the sky and it will select a large area I'll then come to the add mode and then click in other areas around the sky to select as much as the sky as I can that's pretty much the major part of the sky and then I will just use the navigator option here and zoom in and drag it over to this tree area and I'm just going to select some of the sky that is showing through the tree branches I'm not going to go too mad but I will just zoom in a little bit more just so I can get to some of these slightly smaller ones um. this is probably the, you know the fiddliest part of this here but luckily I've got an image that hasn't got too many fiddly bits to go around right that's Oh, that'd be good enough for the, you know this if you're obviously if you're doing this yourself and your own images you will probably take a bit more time and select all of the ones that you need to select right I will stop there and 
what I'm going to do now is we need to refine this selection. We don't have the refine option with the flood select tool, but if I come up to the selection brush tool, you can now have a refine option and the you know, the selection that we've made already will stay as it is. So what I'll do is I'll come on to the other side of the screen here and I'll click refine. We just need to wait for this to right. The red area is the area that is going to be sort of it will end up being the area that we want to keep because um, it is a sky that we're going to replace and I'm just going to in overlay mode so this makes this red this area because if, if I picked one of the other modes like black you can see the outline you can I mean even with black you can just click and brush around the edges wait for it to analyze that as you can see that hopefully you saw that it sort of made a better selection around the edge just sort of cleaning up the edge a bit now I didn't want to take so much of that away um, let me just control Z so I'll not go so close to the edge this time That's a little bit better. So I'll be a little bit more careful going around the outside of these ones. Alright. Let's just move this selection up here. You can do this in either you know, in your, the black matte mode or in the overlay mode, whichever one works best for you. And it's probably best not to do too much in any one sweep because it's given the program much more work to do and it's where it may make slight mistakes so I'll go back press control and Z just to I'll, I'll stay a bit further away from the edge on that bit there nearly there, sorry for the how long this is taking I was going to try and make this a very quick video right, we're now getting down to the the tree area, so I'll just press control and Z on that one, it took too much away, let's go back to the overlay mode no, I will leave that, I'll go press control and Z and go back it's just a case of keeping an eye on, on what you've selected and make sure it doesn't take too much away from the selection edges right, so let's come down into the tree area And then I'll just click on some of these areas here to help define some of the the holes that I selected previously. Right, 
I think those last two I will go back control and Z a couple of times and I'll leave that hole as it was so I'll press control and zero to zoom out and we can look at that that is the selection area in that mode we've got that mode or you've got the black and white mode so I'll just click apply and so now we have the selection area here so what I now want to do is I want to invert this selection so I'll come to select and then invert pixel selection or you can do control shift and I so now this will mean is the building and the tree that is being selected and not the sky and I can press Control and J and it will make this area that is now selected on a new layer if I hide this background layer as you can see it is just the image of the pagoda and the tree and the sky has been removed I'll bring that back I can press Control and D to lose the selection area so now all I need is a sky so I'm going to pick this one come to select select all edit copy come back to my pagoda image click on the bottom layer which I've now put a tick back in so it's now visible and now when I paste it will paste above this but below the image that we've just made so edit and paste and there you have it you've got a new sky behind the picture I mean you can turn this sky off and that's what it was a plain blue sky and that is what it now looks like it may not be a hundred percent perfect selection but I think for most people it will be more than adequate and there was no layer mask involved it's just select the area invert the selection make a new layer add the sky layer in between those two layers and you will have the new sky that you are after so now all you need to do now is to save this or more importantly export this as a jpeg or tiff or png whichever format you want to save in and that is the end of the tutorial so thank you for watching i hope this helped gary and goodbye